Greetings everyone, hello, welcome back to the live stream. My name is Matt Bailey, the National Ambassador for the Scotch Bolt Whiskey Society. I'm again flanked by bottles of whiskey, and my printer is making noises, so apologies in advance for all that. Uh, and I wanted to share with you some um, some of the, a great question I got actually between last night's live stream and tonight's. And after you've watched this one, by the way, I'd recommend tuning in and saying hello to Scotty at the 9 p.m. slot. He often does it on, pardon me, often does it on Monday nights, but he's on Tuesday night tonight. And he, uh, Scotty from the Oak Barrel, likes to talk a few things whiskey as well. I think he's talking about Canadian whiskey tonight. Poor guy. All right. Um, now, I got asked a question. Uh, I got asked a question last night uh, on the, um, after the live stream, uh, which was, uh, Hi, Matt. I'm just trying the 35.234 at the moment. Now, just to provide some context, 35.234 is Distillery 35, cask 234 from the SMWS, uh, that has been bottled, and it is bottled for the advent calendar. I am not lucky enough to have an advent calendar. I'm going to pour myself down, by the way, because I'm here talking to you, and I don't have a whiskey in front of me. Now, 35.234 um, is the, it's a 17-year-old whiskey from a Speyside distillery, Near Elgin, actually pretty much in Elgin, in Scotland, that is one of my favourite distilleries. Everyone loves the 35s. And they have a, um, this one's been matured in a first fill ex-IPA cask. So let me talk about this for a second. But the question that was submitted last night was, um, I'm just trying that 35.234 at the moment. And the IPA influence is so strong that I felt like I was drinking a cask strength beer instead of a whiskey. This is my first time tasting something from an unusual barrel. Maybe for something, maybe for tomorrow's live, you can talk about, uh, you can chat about the most unusual types of barrel you've tried and whether it works or not. That last part is really intriguing to me, uh, whether it works or not. By the way, I want to say a big hello to Whiskey Soros, 45 Finn, Dram, Caribbean whiskey drinker, whiskey and drinkies, Matt Music, Benoit. Good to see some of my fantastic regulars joining in. It is Tuesday night, of course, it's time for a chat, and we're talking a little bit about cask finishes. We've talked about finishing and, and extra maturation before, but tonight we're talking a little bit about unusual barrel types. Um, and the question that I got was um, from a member who got one of the advent calendars and asks, um, the IPA cask finish on that whiskey, uh, sorry, extra maturation on that one, um, is unusual and um, it doesn't work or not. Is that, does it work? Is it like, do those ex does that kind of maturation work? So it's an IPA, it's a 35.234 and it's extra matured in an ex-IPA cask. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to provide some context here for a moment about different cask types and some recent news. So, previously, the, so what, actually I'm going to start by saying that the types of casks that whiskey can be matured in in Scotland to be deemed Scotch whiskey is fairly heavily governed by a body called the SWA, which stands for Scotch Whiskey Association. Now the SWA is, um, you can choose to be a member or not of the SWA as a distillery, but pretty much every distillery is a member and um, there's only a few that aren't. And it it's the governing body that provides what the definition and uh, rules, protections, and uh, for lack of a better word, appellation behind Scotch whiskey. Um, and I think that's a, it's, it's an interesting one. Of course, some one argument could be made that bodies like that can stifle innovation in in exploring different types of cask types, different types of grains, and and things like, and different types of maturation. Um, others would argue that that protects the, the, the flavor, well, not so much the flavor, well, no, it's the flavor to some extent, but it protects the overall category of Scotch whiskey and what it stands for. And I'm also for that as well. So I'm for innovation, but I'm for that. So I guess a body like them can be quite useful. Um, Alex Moores, Summer and Guy, good to see you both. Alex, I need to call you actually. Th thanks for reminding me. Um, ooh, the nose on that. The age is starting to shine through on that one. Just lovely. It's an 18 year old, by the way. I'll talk more about that one in a moment. Now, previously, you are able to mature whiskey in, I mean, previous to July this year, you're able to mature whiskey in ex-bourbon, of course, ex-sherry, of course, and a range of fortifieds, ex-port, uh, ex-Madeira, ex-Moscatel, uh, and even ex-rum casks. So, and that's really, 
that was sort of the scope of it. Uh, you know, different types of rum casks, white rum casks, dark rum casks, etc. It was, it was all fine. And then um, I think it was about a year ago uh, that there was a release from Glen Murray Distillery, which was in an ex. It was extra matured or finished, I should say, in an ex cider brandy cask. They got in a bit of trouble for that. Um, they got a bit of a sort of slap on the wrist for that and said, "Stop, stop doing that, please." Uh, and then shortly after, in July this year. The Scotch Whiskey Association changed the rules a bit and opened up the uh, floodgates for a few more types of casks. And so from the press release, I should just say here, it says that uh, there's been an amendment, this is in July, an amendment to the Scotch Whiskey technical file, uh, which was revealed from the SWA, which gives specific guidance on which casks can be used to mature or finish Scotch Whiskey. And that um, used to call me on my cell phone. <laughs> okay, Alex. Um, uh, the spirit must be matured in new oak casks or oak casks that have been only used to mature wine, still, or fortified, and or beer, ale, and or spirits, with the exception of any wines, beers, or ales made with stone fruits. So let me just get this, let me clarify this for you all. Uh, a spirit from a, Scot a Scotch whiskey can be now extra matured or finished or fully matured in um, Casks that have been used to mature, have previously been used to mature types of wines. Of course, that was, that was already okay. Um, so that means still wines or fortified. And, and, slash, and or beer slash ale and or spirits. So that means all beers and ales can now be used to extra mature uh, a spirit. The influence of that beer can often be quite minimal. Sometimes it can be quite maximal. And that changes over time. Um, uh, changes with the spirit type, I should say, and changes with how long it's used for and the influence of that beer. A big, rich IPA will obviously impart a lot more flavor to a spirit. Uh, however, any wine slash beer slash ale or spirits that is produced from or made with stone fruits is not allowed still. And any and no fruit beers whatsoever, no fruit spirits, no um, grappas or things like that. No flavoring, no sweetening, nothing like that, of course. And... Um, it says here, this is the interesting part, it says, regardless of the type of cask used, the resulting product must have the traditional color, taste, and aroma characteristics of Scotch whiskey. Let's just think about that for a second. I'm going to repeat that one. Regardless of the type of cask used to finish or mat fully mature whiskey, the resulting product must have the traditional color, which we, which we know as traditional color of Scotch whiskey. You can't release a, you know, bright pink whiskey or a blue whiskey or like you've seen blue ink gins and things so it must have the traditional color taste and aroma characteristics yep of scotch whiskey so it, there is still protection in place but to what extent that subjectivity of that aroma and flavor characteristics can be determined by the swa is interesting so the reason why i'm digging into all this sort of like almost uh legal speak of of the um of these amendments to the um, technical act of Scotch whiskey. The reason why I'm digging into this is because of that question from a member last night who was tasting the IPA matured, extra matured cask 35.234 in the Christmas advent calendar. It was the second whiskey in the pack. Um, and she said that the IPA influence is so strong she felt like she was drinking a cask drink beer instead of a whiskey. Okay, very strong influence on that. It's a 17 year old whiskey and it was extra matured. So I think that one was about probably two or three years in XIPA casks, which is a long time. Um, so what are the most unusual types of barrels you've tried and whether it works or not? No, it doesn't always work. In fact, sometimes it's downright um, uh, woeful. And this is why it's often a, a, quite a big risk to rejuvenate a spirit that maybe needed a bit of help or to change a flavor profile of a spirit by using different wacky types of casks that are not typically used in Scotch whiskey. Um, Petrino, Mike Perth, Hot Dog Extravaganza, Aussie Gar, Cigar Smoker, Mads, e Ezra, Sally. Um, Sally, I'm actually talking about something you were, we were talking about. So, um, still wine, says Mads. So what about sparkling and champagne variants? So it doesn't actually specify sparkling or champagne variants. And I think you'd get in a bit of trouble that because of the, I think that will get you in a, that that would get um, that would probably get into a bit of hot water. It doesn't specify in the in the update the amendment to the technical act. However, um, I know there was a whiskey that was uh, finished in a had some sort of finishing going with a sham with champagne with a champagne cask, and I don't think it was. Um, I think it was so far from desirable they they tipped it down the sink. Um, 
there's some things I just don't think would react well with the spirit, especially when it comes to finishing. Uh, and I, I don't know if Champagne would, but you know what has changed is that now Calvados, X Tequila and X Calvados casks are now okay, which is a very interesting step in, in that direction. Um, I remember talking with actually Mad Zill like this one. I remember talking with uh, one of my colleagues in the UK and I've still got a, I think it's a 30 pound or maybe 50 pound bet with him about um, whether we'd see a, um, uh, whether we'd see a SMWS whiskey one day from an X tequila, uh, finished in an X tequila barrel or extra matured in an X tequila barrel. And his response was, no, no, we won't see that. And I said, I reckon we'll see it even the next three years. And he said, um, all right, let's put a bet on it. So I'm not, I'm not goading anything here and I don't know any inside knowledge on this stuff, but I, I do reckon we we'll, might see some experiments because let's be honest, the society has been at the forefront of experimenting with casks sometimes to the point of our, um, of, of getting a bit of slap on the wrist ourselves. I'm going to show you some examples of that. And I don't have that many. I don't have like some rare archive of society experiments in my office. That would be called the vaults of Leith where they keep a lot of those. Um, so, oh, by the way, before I show you these, I'll just read the rest of that press release uh, on one point here. So in practice, the new rules surrounding this, which came in you know, six months ago, the new rules mean that distillers can now mature Scotch whiskey in a much wider variety of casks, including those previously used to age agave spirits, which includes tequila and mezcal, uh, Calvados, barrel edge Cachaya, Sochu, Baiju, and as well as some other fruit spirits. Of course, as long as those fruit spirits are not imparted from the being any sort of like leftover swish or any flavoring into the into that other spirit, because that would again contravene the first part of the act. Anyway, um, it has been uh, thought that changes open the possibility for maturing casks, maturing scotching casks previously used for barrel edge gin. Um, but the SWA has again clarified that gin would be excluded since barrel maturation is not a traditional part of most gin production process. And also the rules rule out exciter casks, unfortunately, which means that Glen Murray's projects were still, uh, still uh, banned. And yes, which leads me to this release. I'm going to show you this one first off the bat. Mads, you'll like this one, actually. Um, hold on. I'm going to grab some of these comments. Whiskey Drinker joined. Uh, Robbie joined. Can they release bottles with other barrels and not call it whiskey? Are they like and are they likely to? Um, you mean like whiskey steens? You mean like barrel like release bottlings that aren't called Scotch whiskey? Yeah, I'm sure they could. They'd have to call it spirit uh, flavored spirit drink, or um, you know, fireball <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? Like they have to call it, give it a name that's not Scotch whiskey. Um, fireball is all Canadian whiskey, um, for instance. You know, it's like. Um, but yeah, I guess you could. But I mean, you'd have to create an entire new sort of product segment for it, which for brands is a very, very, very expensive exercise. So maybe, um, never say never, Sally, I never do. That's right. Um, bottles from aged, uh, aged in barrels that wouldn't be allowed for Scotch whiskey. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Uh, they could release bottles that aren't supposed to be allowed to be called Scotch whiskey. Like if you aged with Scotch whiskey, pardon me, and then finished it or extra matured it in say an X, uh, cider brandy cask or an ex uh, fruit wine cask yes or fruit beer an ex fruit beer cask yes you'd be breaking the rules of the swa so but as long as you didn't call it scotch whiskey on the bottle and didn't market it as such and didn't pretend it was you'd be you'd be fine with it but what would you call it i mean you'd end up calling it just you could you might even get it you might even get in trouble if you were releasing it in scotland and calling it whiskey it's a gray area but you know um not whiskey, but I tried a Calvados finish in a rum cask. Very interesting, super buttery, and felt like a liquid croissant. Ben, I kind of want to taste that. Uh, that's a that sounds like a very tasty experiment. Speaking of tasty experiments, I just saw that this morning actually the um, the SMWS in the UK have released a, a SMWS Code Fifty Three, which is one of our favourite Isla distilleries here in Australia, that has been extra matured in an ex Armagnac barrel. That's very cool, and that's now okay, of course. Um, but it's an ex Armagnac barrel that's matured and smoky spirit. I have been lucky enough to taste it already, um, and it's a uh, spellbindingly tasty cask. Um, but I don't know if we're getting any allocation in Australia, but we'll see how we go. Um, gang Goidel joined. Good to see you, Gang. Always a pleasure, Gang. And this is a shout out for, uh, for Mr. Crispy Snacks himself, Gang Goidel. Um, so I, I've actually got a bit of a society, a piece of society history here that you might like to see, especially if, if Mads, if you're still online, you'll like this one as well. Uh, this is cask 35.178. Uh, Alex knows this one as well. 
It's called the Dunnage Bakehouse. It's from our previous livery, of course, that one. Uh, it's one I picked up courtesy of a friend. And there we go. I'm going to hold that nice, nice and close to the uh, the camera there so you can see it. Um, now, I don't know if you can properly see that, but what I'll, I'll read something out to you on that. Um, this is an old Dunnage warehouse with Hessian sacks containing dried figs, sultanas, candied peel, and sticky prunes, and spicy hot cross buns in the oven. There's the, the, the tasting note on there. It's a 13 year old that was distilled in 2002. And the cask type says first fill gin hogshead. That's right. This is a single cask whiskey that was extra matured in an ex gin cask. Now, it's the only one that the society's ever done that I know of. And it's, like I say, a piece of, I guess, a, a bit of a piece of liquid history of the society and also of just um, breaking the rules a bit, as we've often done, um, and getting a little bit of trouble for that one as well, I'm sure. Uh, which is rather cool because it's like it's it's a cool piece of little history that one, uh, you know. It's got I'll hold it up because I don't know if you can see that past the comment section. I know I can't, but that's um you know it's a cool little piece of sort of like society history right there, um, and I'm gonna pop that aside because it's not open yet, but it's one that I'll open up for. I think I'm gonna actually crack it open for a um an event, perhaps in um in Sydney or in Melbourne uh, next year because I want to open up some weird ones. I've got a collection of some weird bottlings from the society that. Uh, some mostly paper label era um, and some newer ones as well that have uh, caused a stir. Uh, it's co- it will be bottlings that maybe we'll call it band bottlings or uh, uh, drams that caused a stir. Ha ha ha. Anyway, uh, and there have been a few. There was actually a rum that caused quite a stir about two years ago, and there's one. You know, there's another whiskey that actually caused a stir earlier this year. So there's things like that which I've, I've kept aside so we can have some a special evening uh, tasting those things perhaps between Melbourne and Sydney, we could do one each, I don't know. I'm working on a few little concepts like that at the moment, which might be a little bit of fun. Ad Moen joined, good to see you. I'm gonna have a sip of my dram, and actually I'm gonna have a glass of water first, because I'm a bit talking too much. So going back to um, um, Sally's question, of course, whiskies that are um, partially or fully matured in ex-wine barrels, and ex-wine barriques is also fine. I dug out this bottle of um, Ardbeg Drum, for those who, who follow some of the Ardbeg core range releases, and not just uh, Society single casks. Um, this is a, it was a committee only edition 2019. It was a, it was a whiskey that was bottled at 52% and it was finished in rum casks. So yes, rum cask whiskey is quite a thing. I think it works quite well for this release, if I'm being honest. Uh, I, I, I'm not intending to be a collector this one. I just picked it up earlier this year and haven't had a chance to crack it and drink it yet because there's a lot of open bottles in my office. Um, so yes, we have a whole bunch of bottles, uh, you know, I just want to show, you know, three examples of whiskies that are, uh, you know, are in different types of casks and different types of things. Do they always work? Do things that are matured in ex tequila barrels, ex gin barrels, ex Calvados barrels? I haven't tasted an ex Calvados whiskey yet. I've tasted a tequila finished whiskey and I've tasted a, um, uh, things like that. It's, it's always very hit or miss. Uh, I think there's a, uh, this. It's, and when it hits, it's quite nice, but when it misses, it's kind of like, oh, I mean, it's, what would you have done with that spirit? It's a little bit, um, it's kind of disappointing. When, it's really disappointing when you, when you taste something that should have worked and didn't. Uh, so in, on, with that said, that's sort of my, um, my little rant for tonight. Scott, because you just joined in, I've already given you a plug, mate, and I already said that uh, if you want to watch Scott talk about, I think you're talking Canadian whiskey tonight, Shelter Point or something. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I only just glimpsed at the story, I'm sorry. Uh, then tune in to see him, um, I think on the Oak Barrel page on, and he does a 9 PM stream, which is great. Sally, I hope that answered your question. Um, and I, cause I even printed your question out so I could get it right. Um, unusual types of barrel, whether it works or not. Yes. Barrel types can be unusual and they can be a lot of fun when they're, when they're quite, um, when, when they're interesting, it's more about just creating an interesting and unique spirit and finding a nice balancing point in the middle. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's do that. No tequila finished. Scotty, you're gonna see a tequila finished whiskey before you, you want to, trust me. That it's not gonna it's not like you know, oh you know you know it's ha- you know it's coming, you know it's coming. Ever since the laws relaxed back in July means that probably by July next year or even earlier, we'll start to see some tequila finished uh barrels. Which will be which will, I think will be interesting to see. I think it'll be interesting to see and how it reacts with different spirit because I look at certain distilleries and I say their spirit excels in certain cask types. And I think that's I think that's true. I'll give you an example. I think 
personally. Uh, I think things like Bamore excel in X Sherry. I think Kilhoman excels in X Bourbon. Uh, and certainly, of course, I've said that about lots of distilleries. And then I say things like I often I often think that uh, things like um, certain distilleries have their sweet spot in age statement as well. Um, which is, uh, for instance, I think actually I'll use Kilhoman as an example again. I think as a distillery, their their spirit shines at a younger age, uh, whereas I think distilleries like uh, Springbank I think excels at an older age. Again, I'm happy to be proven wrong on these things, and it's not really being proven wrong. It's just difference of opinion and saying, you know, what you prefer in a spirit. But I think once we find which distilleries their sweet spot meets in the middle with a lovely finish in a tequila barrel, I think we might be surprised. I think we might be surprised. Probably say, you know, we might end up all be saying things like, have you tried Manic more out of um, X tequila barrels? Oh, they're delicious. It's like, uh, yeah, we could be saying that. But at the same time, I don't think I will be because I know I know Manic more just absolutely shines in first fill and refill bourbon. Um, but again, Again, I'm open to new flavors and things like that and how that will react and how which 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 spirit characters will react best with that. And I think that's really a, a job for a good blender to find out. And maybe for someone someone like um, someone like you and Campbell to have a have a crack at and see what he can do with tequila. Um, rather than it won't be guesswork, it'll be it'll be careful experimentation and things like that. And I think it'll be I think that'll be interesting. But there's still obviously a lot of sherry matured whiskies, a lot of ex bourbon barrel whiskies. And also interesting things coming through the pipe for us, which you'll see in coming out turns. Um, we've got a lovely, uh, really fantastic re return of a code 16 for us, which is great, both peated and unpeated. Um, and uh, and lots of lots of lovely things coming through the next pipeline. I've been working on January, January out turn a little bit over the last couple of days, which has been a lot of fun. And um, that's all from me right now. I just want to talk, answer Sally's question. If you've got any other questions, um, please feel free to shoot them through. I'll put up the, um, the, the live announcement for tomorrow night in a moment. And uh, I look forward to answering your questions every time. And I love doing the lives and always chatting about something every single night. There's always something to talk about. And I love digging in deep on a few of these topics. So uh, obviously, if you've, got a bit of, if you've got a question, send it to me a bit ahead of time. We can uh, decipher it a bit because sometimes I get thrown some curveballs and I'm like, well, I need to research that a bit more before I give a detailed answer. Um... The YouTube quality on yesterday's video was bad. Oh, it was spew, I guess. And the YouTube quality. Okay, I'll see what happened with that. Hmm, okay. Or maybe we can re we might re-upload it or just... Was it your internet connection, Cal, or was it our upload? I don't know if the upload... I would have just uploaded at 1080p, I thought. Um, any mid-months? Rowan Guy, yes, there's... I, I, as I mentioned, I think we're going to get three casks up by Friday. So it's not really a mid-month. It's sort of... We had that big outturn on the 15th, as you know. But just the beginning of this week, we'll have a, a couple of new releases up on the site and we'll advertise that. We'll put that through on an email blast to all the members as well. So some, some love and new casts coming through, don't worry. And then uh, and we'll see you then for the January outturn after that, which would be great. So a few more lives for the rest of the year. I've, had a, I've made a decision that I think next week uh, I'll do a live. I've got a few lives that are going to be on the fly both here and in Melbourne over the next few days. But if I... Um, if I get a chance, what I'll do is I'm going to do like one big live, possibly on Friday week, around the um, mid month, around around the mid December, and that'll be the last live for the year. But then I will come back guns blazing. I think just about two days, or two or three days before outturn next. And by the way, outturn is the tenth of tenth of January. Where it's going on the second Friday. Everyone's still on it's on summer summer brain on by the third, so we'll go with the tenth instead. That's all from me. Thank you so much. Um, inside scoop on the mid-month. Not yet. Not yet, Calte. But I'll see you all tomorrow night. And thank you so much. Send the questions through and I'll, I'll catch you. Oh, live from the Christmas party. Yes. Live from the Christmas party. Absolutely, Cal. Actually, we've already got that planned. You'll see more about that. And I'll see you all tomorrow.